It's episode five. Biomech B ball. Training with Rossi G. Roro G Field. Arguing 5 4. We got a YouTube for this one. And what I'm going to talk about, I'm going back to basketball. So the first two episodes were more basketball related, second two were more general fitness related. Back to basketball for episode five. We're talking about my TikTok, the middle position. So what I define the middle position as is when you are, you beat your defender, you get in the paint or you get in the lane. Now what? And I feel like as a player growing up, that's really when I started to branch off as a more, I'm not gonna say super elite, but I was more in the elite category for at least my area is because I was questioning that. Getting past the first guy wasn't, wasn't a problem. It was always about, all right, now what? Because most of the time the defense is collapsing. And before you jump into a lot of moves, and on my TikTok, it's just gonna be a lot of different options you could do in the middle position. You have to understand a few things. So one, you need, you need the groundwork to even put yourself in that position. If you can't shoot lights out from three, unless you're lightning quick, you're not gonna get in the lane. If you can't shoot lights out from three, unless you were blessed with lightning speed, you will not get in the lane at an elite level, at a college level. So the, the thing that you could control every time, anybody can shoot. So that's the first thing. Can you shoot very consistently, catch and shoot threes? The next thing is, can you even beat your first guy? And I think a lot of people, I'm not gonna say definitely can, but that's not a lot of the time the biggest problem. But how they do it is sometimes a problem. So if you, if you can do it by shoving your head down to the ground and just trying to run your guy over and not even know what's going on and being a robot, then yeah, you're gonna have a lot of problems once you get by that first guy. If you could do this in a controlled manner, now you're ready to discover options. And something that you have to realize when it comes to basketball is you want to train as if you're playing against an elite defense. You don't want to train to get good shots at the park. Maybe you do, but if you want to make it and get a scholarship and play pro, the way you train has to be fitting for the competition that you're gonna be facing. So, this is what I would say. If you're gonna drive, a lot of it is a little bit more macro than micro. And this is what I mean. Your thought process when it comes to a good drive or bad drive is more about the time of the possession in the pos offensive possession that your team is in rather than your skill. It's more about up here than your ability to actually execute. Your ability to execute is so important, but a lot of people do have that ability, but up here, their ego is telling them, oh, I can beat my guy every time, I'm just gonna go every time, when that may not be the best for your team, and it's not the best for you. See, when you drive, if you drive on the second or third time you catch the ball in a possession, now more things are gonna open up. If you drive right away, that's, that's fine, but no, everyone's gonna be watching you, and against an elite level defense, they're not broken down after the first drive. They'll collapse on you, that's fine, and now you gotta know, kick it out. If you're driving to score though, if you're legitimately driving to score, most of the time, you'll have better opportunities on the second or third touch in the possession. 
So you want to drive on the second or third touch. That second or third touch, now you're in the lane. Now this is when the players start to question, all right, what do I do? They're still there. They're still kind of there. What do I do? You won't know what to do unless you've practiced your thousands of reps driving with your head up, like I just said before. So your head's up. Now once you're past your guy, it's a slow, fast game. It's a game of changing speeds. That's everything. It's a game of changing speeds. You get in the paint. You get in the lane. You get by your guy. Most of the time, take a dribble and relax for a half a second. You're relaxing for a half a second and you're just paying attention to what's going on around you. Is it a hop step in the middle of the paint, get your guy open? Is it a hop step, wait even longer and see what happens? It's a, it's, a, it's a read. So you get by your guy, now it's a read game. You're ready, but your, your guy's gone, right? If your head is up and you blew past your guy and there's no one in front of you, yeah, keep the same speed and race to the rim, right? But against elite level defense, people are in the way. So maybe it's a dribble, relax, oh, quick Euro. Maybe it's a dribble, relax, spin. Maybe it's a dribble, relax, sidestep, shot. Maybe it's a just a simple hop step in the lane, get someone else open. Those reads though, it's way easier to make those reads if you can A, shoot the ball, two, have a general understanding that you're your drives are going to be way more impactful if they come on the second or third touch. And then you can worry about what are you going to do after that point. I think it's an elite level skill. If you're working on the middle position, as I call it, if you're working on what you do after you beat your man off the dribble, I think that's an elite thing to practice. But everyone's practicing it. But is everyone ready to practice it? I don't think so. I think people are more in the, like at least young basketball players are more in the realm of, all right, I got to get my shot right. And I got to learn the game. Because if you just start, if you give something to someone that they're not ready for, then you're going to run into problems. If they're not ready for all these moves... And then they try and use the moves in the game and they don't work. Now they start feeling insecure about their game, not confident. And they just keep pounding in those drills, which are good drills, but they might not be ready for them. There's no drill that's inherently bad. People on social media are so judgmental of these drills that these guys post, whatever they say, oh, this is a bad drill, you can't use this. No drill is inherently bad. It's like it's like weightlifting. No exercise is inherently bad. There's no inherently bad movement that you could do. It just doesn't exist. It's how you apply it. What's what's the player, what's the patient, what's the client level and then you apply certain drills for that level. And I think as far as my experience people are doing things Athletes, basketball players are doing things that are not on their level. It's not their par. They have to be worrying about simple catch and shoot. Like so much until it's down pat. Maintain it. And then they can worry about, all right, now they're closing out on me. How do I drive? How do I beat my first guy? Very simply, the rip through. How do I master the rip through? How do I... Like, not even the triple threat game. How do I just master going right or going left off the catch? Once you do that, and that is way simpler than it, it, it's way more complicated than it sounds. I'm making it sound very simple. That should take a year, thousands of hours of, of, of deliberate, just you're practicing, not deliberate, deliberate, deliberate practice on those skills. It's, it's really not a complicated game. It's really not. It's how you approach it though. What's your mentality? You know, if, if you're taking advice from someone that's giving something to you too complicated, 
are you aware enough to say, all right, you know what? This is not good for my ego. This is not good for my game. I don't even see how I'm going to apply this at this stage of my game. If I were to give you things, if I were to train Harden, I would be doing things with Harden a little bit differently than I'd be doing it with anybody else in the world. It depends on their situation, their game. It has to be individualized. It can't just be, all right, everybody get to the sideline. Let's do some ball handling drills. When you, you can't even shoot. So you're not gonna even be able to use any of those drills in the game. And the point is to get opportunity. That's the whole, that's the name of the game. You wanna play, you get opportunity. You need opportunity. How do you get opportunity? You start from the ground up. You develop a perfect three. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be pretty fucking good three. Then you drive. And you worry about guarding the ball, learning the game, sprinting to corners, offensive rebounding, playing in the half court as a team. And then when you see that more things are starting to open up, then you go for those, all right? Very simple. So, that was episode five. The breakdown before the middle position. Okay? Spy on Bowl, you were training with Ross G just now. Roro G Field, R-Green 5-4. I'll see you later.